uh, good afternoon everyone so i am pranjum priyam bora currently teaching in bahana college and your moderator for today's session and i would like to welcome our respected resource person ma'am dr ketu kre ipsc coordinator sir dr pankaj bora and all the participants here to the third session of this online workshop and particularly to this session on ethical issues in ethnography organized by iqsc cell bahana college in collaboration with the sutia jatiya gobeshana parishad so before starting the session i would like to introduce you all with our honorable resource person dr keto kri ma'am she is the assistant professor of department of political science kohima college under nagaland university she has completed phd on the topic society and politics in the borderlands a case study of a kanyak naga village located at the indo myanmar borderland from guwahati university her academic and research interest include borderland and border communities in south asia identity politics in northeast india peace and conflict minorities and persons with disabilities she was awarded with ucc and then uh, she has conducted two minor research projects a study on the borderland communities along the indo myanmar border with special reference to the chaminangang nagas funded by center for southeast asia studies guwahati university and the second project is mainstreaming the lived experiences of persons with disabilities in nagaland a gender perspective funded by juban sasawaka sorry sasakawa peace foundation grant for young researchers from northeast india she has more than 10 publications in journals and chapters in books she has presented research papers in more than 15 international and national seminars and conferences so i hope i believe that this session will be a very productive one and yes ma'am you can proceed with the session over to you ma'am hello good afternoon everyone uh, it's a great privilege for me to be a part of this national workshop i thank my my friend my brother Dr. Pankaj and his colleagues for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this, and I also would like to thank the participants for joining this program. Uh, I am not a very uh, seasoned researcher. I'm still um, I consider myself as a, a young researcher, though my age may not be that young. Uh, but I believe that uh, through this kind of research, uh, you know, uh, workshop, we learned we will learn from one another and we will learn uh, better uh, i got to understand that uh, this program is attended by scholars and as well as assistant professors from uh, various parts of the country particularly i i have seen many participants from assam arunachal pradesh we also have participant from delhi and i believe that uh, the session that i'm going to have with you will be uh you know will aid something meaningful to the research journey that you are about to take or you are currently doing so today um my presentation is on ethical issues in research particularly in ethnography and um i'm from political science background but i like more of political sociology so i like i have borrowed uh, many things from sociologies and from anthropologies so today what i'll be sharing with you is uh, uh, some of the things that i have learned in my own uh, phd research my personal research projects my interaction with other senior researchers and also of course the readings on various literature on ethical issues so i will be presenting the paper uh, my slides and uh, it would be good if we can have this you know interactive session uh, even as i present uh, from time to time i have to keep asking you question because i know this is uh, the post lunch and post lunch is very very difficult in fact post lunch sessions are very difficult to take because it's very difficult to keep our you know uh, audience alive and uh, i mean you know awake 
of course alive it's very much but awake so uh from time to time i'll be asking you and you can you know uh, open your microphone or even in chat box you can always give them uh give the reply all right <clears throat> so i'll be sharing the my ppt if it's okay with you all right okay so i hope it's visible to everybody yes ma'am all right all right okay thank you okay so the topic which i was assigned is called ethical issues in ethnography and as the chairperson of today's session very generously give you know exaggerated kind of uh, introduction i have done two minor research projects apart from my phd and i'm also still in the process of learning and in the process i have also attended some courses similar courses like this so uh, today i will be presenting whatever i have learned and gathered from all these experiences and i will also share some of the personal experiences that i have en encountered in the field um, All right, so today's presentation is titled Ethical Issues in Ethnography. And uh, all of you, I'm sure you are aware now, and you have been doing research, so you know what is ethnography. Uh, ethnography is a, you know, a systematic study of people and their culture in their natural setting. And this study is you know, done over an extended period of time. And when we talk about uh, ethnography, literally, it means portrait of a people. Uh, I asked for the details of uh, the participants, but I don't know what kind of research you are doing. So um, it would be also good if you can also, you know, share the kind of research that you are doing. And if we can have a discussion towards the end of the presentation, that would be uh, very, very uh, helpful for all of us. So uh, when we talk about ethics, we know that all of us, despite of our differences in our cultural backgrounds, our religion, our you know, ethnic backgrounds, our educational qualification, all of us, we are governed by certain states of ethics. And human beings are not just social beings, but if I may be allowed, I would say that we are also moral beings because we are governed by set of morals, principles. So such morals and principles also, you know, um, affect the research, the kind of research that we do. So today I will not be talking about ethics in research because as a whole, because ethics in research, it's a very broad topic, but I'll be talking about ethics in ethnography. And I would like, uh, you know, you to interrupt me if there is any question, okay? So when we talk about ethics, ethics, uh, you know, occupies a very important place in ethnographic study because these ethics are the moral principles that govern the behavior of the people. And this talks about the notion of what is right and wrong, what is good and evil, uh, what to be done, what ought to be done and what not to be done. Or it can be also understood as a court of conduct. And it, when we go towards our research participants, what is the intention? If I'm doing a research or if I'm writing a proposal, what is the intention behind that? Is it just because of my placement or promotion? Is it just because of the monetary financial benefits that come along with projects, research projects? Or it is just because of mere uh, PhD degree or postdoctoral degree? Or what is the real intention? Is it furthering the, you know, the production and reproduction of knowledge? Is this leading towards you know, unearthing new information on particular area of studies. So I think the intention, the intent of researchers here, very, very important. And I'm sure that all of us, we are here today in this particular session because we have certain intentions. Yes, we have, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, to do research because of money, that is, I'm not saying that is altogether bad, but I think that 
the ultimate uh, objective or the goal of research is to you know to uh, search for more knowledge knowledge production and dissemination of information and research on particular area is very very important and as researchers we have research uh, we have responsibility and accountability towards the research participants i'm using rp for research participants here because of this uh, lack of space now according to uh levy here she write, writes like this ethics involves morality integrity fairness and truthfulness and they are the outcome uh, utmost importance in social studies so that our research is not harmful so when we talk about research in social sciences particularly <clears throat> including humanities, even in science also, there are certain sets of rules and regulations, certain sets of ethic, ethical principles that govern the way we do our research. And particularly in this uh, session, I would like to talk about some of the important uh, principles or ethical principles that should govern our uh, research works that we do. Now, uh, these are some of the, you know, these are some of the ethics that we can think about. Here, uh, ethics can be understood as moral, it can be understood as principles, honesty, right, fairness, choice, honor, value, dignity, conscience, responsibility. These are some of the, you know, words that we can understand from here. So I would like to just ask you, um, what is ethics to you or what do you, what for you what is research ethics slides not being changed okay okay all right all right okay i'll go back yes ma'am uh what is what could be the problem no ma'am it's now moving <coughs> it's now okay yes ma'am all right all right yeah okay now so uh what could what according to you what are the ethical concerns that you should be thinking about in your research area? Uh, I'm sure that all of you are doing your research work. It could be leading to PhD, it could be leading to projects, it could be leading to postdoctoral research. But uh, what are the research, uh, the ethical concerns that you have in, uh, you know, in your current uh, research activities? That is something that I want you to uh, think about that. And you can always, you know, um, write in the chat box as well. So we will proceed. Uh, please uh, let me know if the slides don't move. All right. Now, I would like to quote Dahal here. Uh, he he tells that ethnographic study is value laden, and research results vary as per the researcher's individual value system. And I think this is a very very important thing that all of us we are aware and we must be aware. We, as I said, we come from various diverse backgrounds and the way we grew up or the way we live in a particular social context really shapes, you know, and molds the way we look at others. And this affects our research as well. How we look at our research participants is also reflected by the kind of, you know, uh, the social settings that we have been uh, trained or we, we lived through our childhood, adolescent, even in all adulthood as well. So it's very, very important that we maintain ethics in ethnography because it is value laden. Therefore, the question here is, how do we maintain ethics in ethnography? What are the steps? What are the steps? How can we maintain this? How can we maintain this? in you know how can we maintain the ethical uh, standards in our research so i would be happy if some of you can also give some uh, pointers here i would like to request the presenters you can open this uh, you know the microphone or you can chat as well how can we maintain ethics in ethnography some of the points Online sessions are very, very uh, useful 
because it saves us time, energy, and uh, you know, for us to uh, to stay in our comfort zone, and we can always listen. Uh, but uh, we don't see face to face, and I'm a, a human. You know, I'm a person. Person. I like to meet people. I like to talk, and uh, you know, I like to uh, have face to face or person-to-person -person interaction. So it would be very, very nice if you can. Yes, thank you, Riba, uh, Driti, and Somnath. Okay, so Riba is saying that we should follow the code of conduct. Yes, very, very important. Driti Bora is saying that we should avoid copying others' research work. Yes, I think um, Driti is saying more on uh, plagiarism then Somnath Pati saying that ensuring fairness in our research without forming any presumptions and biases before we start. I think all of you have given beautiful views and I encourage the other participants also to interact. Uh, as I can see from here, uh, 60 number is coming up. So I guess we are more than, we are about 60 of us. So it would be very, very good if we can, you know, um, if we can participate, because this is the time where we want to sleep, right? Yeah, all right. Uh, Lila does say, very informative. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, Rukmini Bordoloi said, data should be real. It should not be fake. Very, very important. Data manipulation is a serious crime. Because in ethnography, some, you know, in some works we have seen, and even among, uh, you know, known people, uh, they they cite in their work or they mention in their work that they have conducted ethnography for months together. But we know that they have traveled just, they stayed just for a week. And I think that is very, very wrong because ethnography is a, is a methodology or is a method where, you know, the researchers have to uh, spend time with the research participants more comparing to other research methodology. So I'm so happy that you are all actively participating and I hope I will not put you to sleep, all right? Okay, all right, so we, we will proceed. Um, all right, now, so here ethical issues, as some of them they have pointed out, we must consider in every stage of research. And where we say every stage, meaning before the research, during the research and even after the completion of the research. Before the research, when we are planning for a research proposal, even for, from, the, from the stage of writing research proposal, we should be, you know, we should follow, we should be guided by the ethical principles. We have seen that some people, you know, they just copy paste the references without really actually referring in, the, uh, in their work. And that is presented to the Institutional Review Board for grants of research works or research projects. And I think uh, that is not right because research ethics have to be there in all stages of research and even during the research as well and even after the completion of the research. So we will, as we go, we will talk about it. Now, there is a question of universality and relativism. And I want all of us to think about this. Uh, why I want all of us to think about this is this, because um, here uh, we are from different backgrounds, we are from different societies, and even when we look at uh, comparing the Western and the Eastern, or comparing the Western people with the Indians and the indigenous people, we, you know, we understand that there is a variation. Uh, let me put it like this. Yes, we may have universal ethical principle, but our local context also determine, okay? Our local context also determine uh, those research, uh, ethical concerns. For example, in some community, monogamy is, you know, is accepted. And universally, and even for me personally, I think mono, I prefer monogamous relationship. Yes, by the way, I'm married and I have a son who is in class one now. Yeah, so I'm also a mother. So I'm talking about monogamy here. However, in some local contexts, okay, in local contexts of some communities, they have polygyny or they have polygamy, polyandry. So when we face that kind of situation as researchers, how do we react? Okay, how do we react? 
We cannot impose our ethical principles on other people. So we have to look at the universe, question of universality and relativism. Another important thing that I want all of us to think about is our positionality. As researchers, we occupy a privileged position in research. You know, because when we go to the research field, uh, like I being an assistant professor, you being an assistant professor from a particular college, when we go to the research field, people think, you know, people, uh, when they know that we are researchers or when we know that we are teachers in universities or in colleges, they have, you know, they have this notion of privileging us and they think that we know more than that, them. So this also sometimes creates problem in our research because we can never know, we can never, never know more than them. We are not to teach them. We are not to, you know, just merely study them, but we are there to learn from them in ethnography. That is very, very important. We are there to learn from the research participants. Therefore, whenever we go to a particular context, which is different from arts, there will be some kind of cultural shock as well. Let me put my example here. I have done my research with borderland communities along the Indo-Myanmar borderland, and my research uh, uh, participants were the Konyaks and the uh, Kemnyungan Nagas. Then I also did my research on the persons with disabilities. So when I do, uh, you know, research on people who are not from my local context, I also go through a kind of cultural shock, or I also experience new learning. And I believe that it is very, very important for us not to be overwhelmed by the emotions, you know, because I'm sure you have heard about Longwa village. That is my study area. And, you know, many uh, YouTubers, many newspaper reports, many, mm, you know, articles, even by researchers, they are writing that, you know, that Indian village, the villagers sleep, the king sleeps in one country, eats in another country. Yeah? Then they have also mentioned about the number of wives that he has. Actually, that was the information which was given, you know, about the past, his ancestors, having 60 wives. Okay. But people are saying that that person has 60 wives and, you know, they do a kind of exotization that, wow, kya bad hai. You know, a shrek, you know, in Assamis or in Nagamis, we say that's, you know, that is a shrek. We cannot, you know. So when we are uh, confronted with that kind of thing, I think we need to, you know, cool down and we need to cross check ourselves that uh, so that we will not be overcome by those um, hypes or exotification of those uh, things in the research field. That is one thing that we need to uh, remember as researchers. Now, another thing is about uh, the subject and object. You know, earlier, uh, initially, ethnographers or anthropologists, they consider the research res uh, respondents or research participants as their as the subject, they were called subject. But today in social sciences, we don't call them subject anymore. We call them research participants or research respondents. Because I like research participants because research participants, they are a very, very important part of the research. So I cannot call them as subject. Uh, there are some people who, you know, kind of go to the extent of objectifying them, objectifying the research participants. So this is also another important thing. Yes, we need to look at object with objectivity. But when we try to objectify them, when we try to treat them as a kind of object, you know, things become very, very problematic in our research. So this is something that we need to think about it. We also need to look at the question of uh, values and facts. What is, you know, what is value? What is the difference between value and facts? What is the material and what is the spiritual? You know, we need to look at the, the dualism. And as I say, we as, as subjective as it may sound, because all of us, we are subjected to our own, you know, kind of ethical principles that we have been taught, we have grown up with. We must try to be, you know, uh, objective as much as possible. 
as your uh, Somnath has mentioned, that we should not form any presumption or biasness before we go to the field or before we start our research. Now, talking about the research ethics, I would also like to talk about uh, the, the three types of research methodologies or research ethics that we understand when we deal with ethics in fieldwork. Uh, let me also humbly tell you that currently I'm also working on a book research uh, on a project book project uh, and this book project is um, you know commissioned by one author called Ronan Lee and we are trying to work on uh, field research ethics in borderlands of South and Southeast Asia. So here when I did my study my readings I learned that as scholars, we need to be aware of what methodologies that we follow and what uh, kind of uh, research respondents whom or participants who are participating in our research. So here there are three types of research, you know, uh, ethics given here. One is Euro-Western ethics, Vedic ethics, or indigenous ethics. So these are the three th different types of ethics that we need to understand. Now, the first one is Euro-Western and Western-centric or Eurocentric research, you know, revolves around the question of ethical principles like informed consent, unanimity, confidentiality, risk and harm policy, safety. These are some of the things that they give importance to and we give credit to them. However, let me also tell you this, that a researcher from Europe or a researcher from non, you know, from the developed countries, if they come with this kind of research ethics without considering the Vedic ethics and the indigenous ethics, and they try to study a particular community in India without really following the Vedic ethics and indigenous ethics, their research will not be complete or will not be very, very, uh, will not be considered as very, uh, you know, uh, reliable. Because if we are studying somebody, we must understand the, the situation that they are and we must try to adopt the research methodology that they follow. Now, Vedic ethics, this is, there are many things and let me be very honest, I'm also a new learner in this kind of, in this Vedic ethics, and this is more of Indian ethics. And it talks about dharma and karma, okay, how dharma, you know, uh, in, in a researcher's life plays important, or how the concept of kar karma plays important life, important, uh, important role in the life of researchers as well as research participants. Coming to indigenous ethics, uh, I'm more of an indigenous researcher, so I work on indigenous research methodologies. Therefore, in indigenous uh, ethics, things like uh, relationship or relational accountability, respectful representation, or reciprocal appropriation is very, very important, as mentioned by Kara. Now, for communities, particularly indigenous communities, for them, they want to be represented pro properly, appropriately. They, do, they don't want, uh, you know, uh, misappropriation of the knowledge. Therefore, we have to be very, very careful, starting from the beginning till the end, even till the, uh, the publication. Sometimes even the copyright is should be given to the community. But in most cases, you know, researchers, they go and study a particular community for a very short period of time and they claim everything, you know, and they claim themselves as to be the, you know, the, the, the knowledge keepers of the community. But as for me, I believe that, you know, the community which we study should be the ultimate copyright holder. So this is another important thing that we need to uh, be careful about. Now, therefore, uh, we will now talk about some of the ethical principles. I'm sure all of us, we know this because in now research methodology is a compulsory paper in uh, PhD research as well, and I'm sure that you have attended similar sessions like this. So to those of you uh, who have attended similar sessions like this, it may be kind of a revision, or if I have missed some points, you may also kindly aid so that I can also put, uh, you know, uh, later on for later presentation. 
Now, um, number one, as I said, ethics have to be followed in all stages, starting from proposal stage, proposal stage till the publication. So here in the proposal stage, normally uh, institutions are supposed to have institution board review. Uh, if there is a, a call for research from IQ, uh, you know, ICSSR, ICHR, you know, they have this board where they review the proposal. And therefore, as researchers, it is also our duty to uh, to present the kind, right kind of knowledge and information that we have, not simply uh, copy pasting the references or reviews, but it is very, very important that we give a very a truthful proposal, research proposal. Uh, and also I would like to talk about, uh, you know, budget also, because there are also cases of rejection of proposal because uh, the budget are too much. The budget does not meet the requirement of the, uh, of the research, the research work that is to be carried. So we need to be truthful on that. We also need to be truthful in using the references, the kind of references that we will be using in the in, in our proposal as well. Now, again, coming to towards, uh, you know, uh, the conduct of the research, I will leave it for now, we will go there. But we will also talk about uh, towards the end, uh, regarding publication, how many researchers they give credit to the community? How many researchers they give, uh, you know, credit to the community that they have studied? How many researchers have given a copyright, okay, or the knowledge right, you know? Or how many people have, uh, you know, uh, contributed towards policy implementation through the research work that they have done? So this is one very important thing that we need to understand. So uh, beginning with the research work, from the proposal stage, after the proposal is accepted, uh, or if it's your just personal individual research, uh, I think it would be good if it's if it's self-financing also, it would be good to have uh, some of your colleagues to go through your proposal so that they can also give you some ideas, you know, they can also help you to improvise on your um, you know, improvise on your proposal. And another thing that I would like to talk about is um, uh, see, sometimes as researchers, we have difficulty following up the deadlines for submission of research proposals. So, uh, you know, uh, what we can do is based on the area of work that you are interested, you can also, at, uh, you know, prepare your research proposal in advance so that you can also do proper literature review. You can do very nice proposal and keep ready. And as and when ICSSR calls for major research, minor research, you know, you can simply, you know, automatically you can upload like that because if we wait for the call and once the call comes up, we do we do it in hurriedly. So I think that is one side, you know, side uh, uh, thing that I would like you to remember. Now, another thing is uh, seeking permission and gaining access. Very, very important. Uh, can you please type some of you who are now chatting us? Can you please type uh, the kinds of research that you are doing now? Uh, the the subject area or the community that you are studying. It would be good if you can have that as well. I'm sure some of you are doing, uh, you know, research. Maybe it's on your own or it's uh, for PhD or for project. So some of the topics, some of the communities that you are, you know, studying. One community, can we have some volunteers? Yes, chairperson, you may kindly inform them as well. All right, Somnath Pati, thank you. You are studying the Adivasi communities. All right, in uh, Jharkhand, present Jharkhand, very interesting. I'm sure others are also coming. Okay, see, uh, it's even for a uh, resource person like, like us, it's very, very, you know, challenging to keep engaging in this online platform. And to be very honest, there are times where I have attended online and there are times where, you know, I have not been very completely attentive as well. Let me be very honest with you. Yeah. Any more, any more coming? How about the others? Oh, great, great. Dimpi Talukdar is studying brass metal handicraft and industry of Hajo. Wonderful, wonderful. 
brass metal. I'm reminded of the the Assamese. Uh, I don't remember the name. Uh, the brass thing that you use while receiving guests and all. No, yeah. What is the name of that? I I have one. I ordered from a friend from Assam. She brought from village. I studied in Guwahati uh, for my BA and my master's and even PhD. So I'm quite fascinated by the brass metal uh, industry that is there. And silk, yes, Hajo, I'm reminded of, you know. All right, Rukmini is studying on Hill Tiwa community. Okay, now I'm also reminded of a, com a Tiwa community uh, are the ones who are having this kind of barter market where they go and exchange goods. They have Junbil, Mela, something. Rukmini, can you answer me? Are they part of this community? You may, you may, uh, I think, um, unmute yourself and we can have discussion as well. All right, good enough. So we have Adivasi community in Jharkhand. We have uh, the brass metal, you know, people who are craftsmen who are involved in Hajo uh, and in brass metal in Hajo. We also have the Tiwa community. So what I was saying is that when we, you go to this Adivasi community or uh, in Hajo or in Hiltiwa, there will be some gatekeepers. And when we say gatekeepers, we are not like uh, chukidars, okay? But they are in research, they are the chukidars. Na? They are the gatekeepers, meaning they are the community leaders who hold the key for you to enter their community. So it is very, very important that we, uh, we have their confidence, we have their trust, we have their permission to go about. It's very, very important before going there. So you go to Adivasi community or a particular village, you should go to the village leader. Village in Nagaland, we call village council chairman. In some communities, they have this chieftain, all right? Or even in Hajo, you will have some lead, you know, somebody leading this industry. Or even among the Tiwa, there must be, a, you know, a tribal leader who is taking care of the, the tribe. So getting permission and getting access to these gatekeepers is very, very important. If you want your research to be successful, having a good understanding, good relationship with the gatekeepers is very, very important. Now, there are times where we get confused. Who is the main representative? The question of representation comes in because there are many leaders. Then whom to, you, whom to trust and whom to be used? I think it's very important for us to diversify, okay? Okay, okay, Rukmini is saying Junbil Mela. All right, all right. Yes, I have a friend uh, from Tiwa community and she talks about the exchange of goods. I give you, you know, I give you Connie, you give me uh, banana like that. No, we exchange things, wonderful concept. All right. Another thing that we need to think about is free and voluntary participation. The research, it cannot be forced. It has to be based on free, voluntary participation. And when we say, you know, free and voluntary participation, uh, I'm not talking just about threatening. We don't, we normally, we will never, you know, threaten somebody. But what we need to be careful is more of inducement and allurement. Some researchers, they go and, oh, can I interview you? Because once you inter I interview you, you will be in the book. And people, these people, these villagers, they are also, you know, uh, curious. They want to be in the book, you know. They want to be in the video, documentary. So such kind of allurement or enticement should not be used.
please be patient. She will resign as she is facing some network issues. Here, because of the REN network is very, very poor. I'm so sorry. Please hold on. Can you hear me? Okay. Hello again. Hello again. I'm so sorry. There was a problem with uh, internet. All right. So I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. 
Uh, I would like to request the coordinator or the chairperson to kindly uh, move the the slides. I would like to go to number four. We were discussing about honesty, transparency. Regarding the funding also, it's very, very important that we present accurate or rough estimate, you know, which is not, you know, uh, requirement. Because uh, we are told that many of the research proposals are rejected uh, because the amount that they earmark is much above the, you know, uh, above the necessity. So that is something that we need to be, uh, you know, uh, thinking about. We also need to move the slides to slides, the next slide. Am I audible? Yes. Hello? Yes, ma'am, you are. Am I? Yes, ma'am, you are. No, 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 no. No. Next. In my slide, it's point number four. Point number four. Point number four. And uh, if, yeah, I see that people are leaving, if they can be requested to join again, it would be good. Please go to point number four. Point number four. The, the previous slide. So regarding the objectives also. Yeah, previous slide, please. Regarding the objective also, it is very, very important for us to uh, be clear about it when we begin with our research, particularly when we first go and meet our research, uh, you know, respondents. Then we should also be careful about the outcome. We cannot give, you know, uh, a false promises to the people if we, you know, Because uh, poor villagers, villagers, simple villagers, are careful about our uh, the intended outcomes as well. Now, another thing that uh, we may think about is how about uh, overt and covert research? Because uh, some of us, is there? Sorry to interrupt, ma'am, but your voice is breaking. In a covert manner, without really telling the people. Research is a covert research. That is exemption. Okay, that is exemption. Uh, if not that, we have to be honest and we have to be transparent. Uh, in this group, is there anybody doing uh, research on military or armed groups? Anybody? Anybody studying on militancy or armed groups? Because I remember uh, some of my uh, contemporaries were studying Alpha. You know, some were studying NSCN IM. You know, so when we go and deal with such kind of research participants, sometimes we have to be little careful about it. Also, we cannot be too overt as well. So we need to think about that. So yes, honesty, transparency, funding, et cetera, these are very, very important, but we also need to determine whether we are doing overt research or covert research. Now, coming to point number five, collaboration and mutual reciprocity. Uh, particularly Western uh, research researchers or Western research methodologies not necessarily mention about collaboration and mutual reciprocity, but for indigenous research, uh, researchers or, or in, in indigenous research methodology, mutual reciprocity is very, very important. We must respect the participants. Okay, they give very, very important uh, instances science on how we should have this collaboration with the local communities. We should have mutual reciprocity given back 
kind of thing, the relationship. And the question of subject and object that I have already mentioned is also very, very important. And point number six, positionality, I have already mentioned, we are at a privileged position, but we cannot assume that we know better than, we know more than our research uh, response. The position that we occupy. For example, um, uh, may I know the community where our friend who is studying Adivasi, uh, the Adivasi community. Are you also from Adivasi community studying your own community? Or are you from a different community trying to study the Adivasi community? Yes? The one who responded earlier? How about, how about uh, the lady who is trying to study the Tiwa community? Are you from Tiwa community as well? Yes? Yeah. Uh, Miss Pranjum, uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, they have texted. Uh, Somnath Patri said he is from different community trying to study Adivasi community. Ma'am? Yeah, Pankaj, am I audible? You please text me if I'm not audible. Somebody please text, somebody please in chat. Participants are requested to hold on. Kohima, it has been raining since yesterday. It was not raining earlier, but the rain started again. 
now you are audible ma'am all right am i audible now yes ma'am okay okay thank you thank you thank you all right okay so i'm talking about cultural differences um somebody operating the slides may move to point number 7 yeah thank you uh respecting cultural differences is very very important as ethnographers because we study people in their cultural context in their natural setting so it is very very important that we keep that in mind uh because of the network issue we are running short of time i am supposed to be uh, to wind up the class by 3 o'clock uh, if there is no problem with you i can prolong little bit because i'm free i so free for the entire evening because of this so um you please let me know okay if you have uh, some other engagements so the next thing thing is prior free and informed consent this comes under the western you know western uh, ethics contributed by western ethics and it is very very important to have informed consent but not just informed consent alone but it should be prior they should be told in advance should be given enough time they should also be free if they don't want to participate yes if 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 they don't want to participate they can say so or they can leave you know they can leave in uh, they can leave they can leave at any stage they can leave or drop out of the project at any stage then an another thing is that they should be also uh, you know pre presented in oral and written form uh, we should also know that uh, most of the older people particularly in uh, tribal communities old people 90 70 80 uh, age group they may not be uh, you know literate fully literate to understand the kind of uh, questionnaires or interview schedules or the consent forms that we are preparing so we should prepare in prepare that in oral form also and written form also and it is very very important many researchers uh, you know we are not trained to give importance okay uh, to to give importance to this uh, prior free and informed consent but i think that is very very important another thing that we need to understand is no harm policy in uh, physical mental psychological harm should never you know be impacted upon our research participants in the sense that we should consider potential risk because for example you are interviewing somebody and whatever he replies is little contradictory or controversial sensitive issue we cannot name that person we must maintain anonymity uh you know you there you interview somebody from a particular district his village cannot be you know say but uh, there is you know there is a rule that we informed uh, we follow confidentiality and anonymity now another you know tell about it uh there is also however when we talk about the indigenous community for example the community knowledge the community knowledge is considered to be a collective resources collective resource and they also need to identify the authenticity of the source so for example you interview the village uh, the village head just anonymize or you just give you know a uh, uh, an alias name then that will create problem that okay chalega you can name me or i want to remain anonymous that is also depending on national uh, a paper in international 
peer-reviewed journal. And during the process of editing, the editors and the publishers, they wanted me to, they wanted me to Otherwise, the problem comes in when we have problem in identifying or authentifying the 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 uh, this is towards the end. I will try to, yes, I will try to wind up. This will be uh, the last slide, the critical questions. Now, the critical questions that I would like to ask you is, uh, is it possible to maintain neutrality at all times? This we must keep on asking ourselves. If you can hear me, it would be good if you can move the slide to the last slide that is critical questions. Then another thing is the perils of misinterpretation, misrepresentation, and misunderstanding. As I said, whom do we consider to be the true representative of a community? Whom do we think to be the representative of the research universe? This is also another thing. Then we should also look into the issue of competing and contesting narratives, because most communities, particularly tribal communities, if we do ethnography, uh, of course, But ethnography, as used by sociologists and anthropologists, this is mostly to do with the communities. So they, you know, they have this role. Because the old people are getting old, their memory is not supporting them. So how do we check those? So I think it's very, very important to cross-check. Look at the non-verbal cues, the tones, the movements of the, you know, the, bo the body language, the gesture, both the, you know, verbal and non-verbal, you know, uh, cues, very, very important. Another thing is regarding as okay, academic freedom. Are we, you know, going to the extent of um, exercising our academic freedom? And while e exercising our academic freedom, are we putting our research participants at danger? 
this is also another thing that we need to think about. And as we have discussed, another thing that we need to think about is the cultural biasness. Now, uh, I have sent your, to your, uh, your coordinator the sample for informed consent form. The first one is information sheet. The second one is consent sheet. So uh, I'm sure you have done this and you know this, but if there are uh, participants who have not done this, I thought that this would be useful and therefore I have shared this. And I would also like to put a disclaimer here that the presentation that I made, these are not my original ideas. Of course, I have shared some of my personal experiences, but I have also read various literatures uh, which I have given in reference as well. Uh, how I wish I could come personally and interact with all of you, but because of the internet I issue, there was a problem in our uh, discussion. But I would love to uh, hear from you. If you have any questions, it would be good if you can put up some questions before we end. We, I think we have 11 minutes to be five, right? Uh, to be three, 11 minutes. Now it's 2.49. So thank you so much for having me. Uh, it would be very nice to meet you in person, and I hope that um, in future also we will uh, meet maybe virtually or even physically. And I wish all of you the very best for your research. And at the end of the presentation, I would say that all of us as ethical people, ethical researchers, we must think about the ultimate goal. Why am I doing this research? Who will benefit from this research? Is it just for my placement? Is it just for my employment? Is it just for my, uh, you know, uh, API? Or is it going to be benef you know, beneficial for those people, you know, whom I'm researching? We have accountability. We have responsibility towards the people we are researching. Let all of us be the voice, voices of those voiceless people whom we are studying and let us Okay, so our resource person is facing some network issues again. There, I would like to conclude today's session as Ma'am has already given us a very informative session on today's topic. So starting from Levy's definition of ethics, then she also mentioned us about the ethical principles, then also described about the subject, object dualism, value facts, and after that, she also told us about the three types of ethics, Euro-Western, Vedic, and scholars, indigenousness. Then she also described about uh, ethical principles. And at last, she had concluded with the perils of misrepresentation and misunderstanding. So I would like to thank every one of you for bearing with us and again, Sorry for the inconveniences and my heartfelt gratitude to our resource person, Dr. Ketu Krimam, IQSC coordinator, sir, admins, and all the participants for making it a success. Thank you.